For far too long, we've been divided by the forces of austerity. Each of us is demanding fairness and equality in this economy. But we've been presented with cuts that are devastating every single community. Meanwhile, banks and corporations are getting away without paying their fair share and ponying up. We cannot continue to fight alone. Labour must be united with every single community in a common front against austerity. Sisters and brothers, we are standing on the shoulders of those who came before us. Now it is time for this generation to defend the gains of the previous generation. Rising together striking things is how much Canada has changed as a result of the neoliberal agenda. I mean, if you go back 30 years ago, Canada was a much more equal and inclusive country. And among other things, you know, the economy was growing. It was growing much stronger than it is today. And when the economy grew, the income gains were widely shared among the population. So the attacks on labour are really part and parcel of the whole agenda, which is includes the austerity agenda, the attacks on social programs and all kinds of social supports. What has been extremely inspiring in the last two years is to see labour and community groups coming together to fight the austerity agenda. What would be terrific is to see this approach taken to communities and regions all across the province. Only by rising together can we really stand up to this cruel and mean-spirited neoliberal agenda. I'm a single parent of two children. Um, I'm a registered early childhood educator, and I'm a member of ACON. I've been a member of ACON for the last eight, nine years. And I can see that the effects that the cutbacks have had on families on their everyday life from day to day because it's it's really hard for families to make ends meet and as a member of ACORN we view this common front as a real great hope for us at ACORN because this gave us the opportunity to work with over a hundred groups including the labor unions and to get our voice heard and get a membership voice heard. There is a saying that there's power in numbers and so when you have the OFL and the other labor unions working along with community organization groups, you really have a real powerful dynamic right there. 
What we're seeing right now with Harper government and Tim Hudak at the provincial level, it's there's a concerted effort to push for a cheap labor strategy. This cheap wage labor strategy is done by two prongs. One, it's attacking trade unions' rights, not just to join a union to exercise their charter right to protest. For example, last year with uh, the provincial government with Bill 115, we actually see educational workers being denied their charter rights to protest and to strike. And now, if with Tim Hudak talking about bringing the American-style anti-union legislations, this is, would be, to me, I think that's just the most direct and vicious attack on trade union rights and decent lives for all. And I think it's time for young people to begin having the audacity to ask for that, for us to have the expectation that they can have their entitled to full-time work when they graduate. It's time for all of us as workers to demand, not just to keep what we've got, but actually pushing for and asking for what we desire. And what we desire is what we desire for all. Incredibly, minimum of 80 workers die each year in Ontario workplaces. And hundreds upon hundreds more die of occupational disease. And there's at minimum 250,000 additional workers that are either maimed, injured, critically injured, or exposed to toxic chemicals in their workplaces. Our message is simple, that no employer should be allowed to write off a worker's life as the cost of doing business. Employers continue to put workers at risk for their bottom line, for their profit margin, instead of eliminating the hazards. Hundreds of thousands of injured workers and their families continue to live in poverty in Ontario because of a compensation system that is more concerned about reducing their unfunded liability than providing the necessary services and benefits that injured workers so deserve. Austerity cuts are affecting the most marginalized communities. Whether you're a woman, a person of color, from the LGBT community, persons with disability, Aboriginal people, migrant workers or new workers, equity groups are bearing the brunt of the corporate and government cuts. And across nearly every group, young workers and students, who are the most diverse in their generation in history, are even hit harder. The labor movement is fighting back against this ongoing inequality by mobilizing with equity communities like never before. We're demanding an end to racial profiling. We're asking for justice for police shooting victims. We're taking action against violence against women and our stolen sisters. We've demanded for human trans rights and bullying must end. We're championing employment equity, childcare, and treaty rights. This work that the OFL has done has put us in the forefront on these important issues that affect everyone. And more importantly, it's forged ties with the community groups that will never be broken. The conservative movement in Canada is built primarily on money, finances. Whereas the labor movement, our strength is people. Our strength is putting together a coalition of people and social activists and using that people power to drive our agenda. With our collective voice, we've managed to shift the debate away from austerity and onto inequality. And in doing so, force the government to raise taxes on high income earners at one end of the scale. And at the other end of the scale, we force them to address the question of minimum wage. In addition, we sent three new Democrats to Queen's Park to hold this government to account. Across Ontario, Labour and the community are rising together to challenge austerity, to challenge inequality, to defend collective bargaining rights, and to create the kind of society that we all wish to live in. So my friends, let me finish by saying that in many respects, what we've got here, we have an issue of fairness our calling card in this community and in every community across this province has got to be one of fairness. 
The crusade, my friends, is one of economic and social justice. And the campaign to do it is to form a common front with our community partners. That's an unstoppable movement, my friends. Social justice, fairness, and a common front with our communities to take on the right-wing agenda in this province and all across this country. Thank you very much, my friends, for standing together. Rising together. Changing.